Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Matthew Gill. I am prophet and first elder of the restored branch of Jesus Christ. And uh, you join me today to discuss the Kirtland Temple sale. Hmm, let's get to it. Okay, everybody, uh, I want to thank you for joining me today. As you can probably still tell, I am recovering from a severe cold. My voice is very baritone at the moment. And I can't hear out of my right ear, so I hope you can hear me, because I really can't hear myself. Um, before I get to today's uh, topic of discussion, I want to just thank everybody who contributed to the fundraiser for the printing of the new Chronicles uh, scriptures. I want to thank all those who we didn't know who have helped, and all those that we do know who have helped. We have raised more than enough money, and as soon as the document has been checked and rechecked, and we have the two new pictures that um, we've commissioned that are going to go into the new scriptures, we will be ready to go to publication. So, um, thank you everybody for your help and support. So, excuse me. Last night, for me, anyway, or for many of you, it might have been during the day, I was um, early in bed, not feeling too good, and I uh, was listening to an audio book, and I had to listen to it on my phone, because I can't hear out my ear at the moment, and all of a sudden I had ding, 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 a notification after notification, it got me not coming on, I was like, what's going on, what's going on, so I get my phone down, and start looking through and um, I see the video of John Hycheck on um, Mormon Book Reviews talking about the sale of the Kirtland Temple and uh, I was just shocked, floored uh, and then uh, it became very apparent who had bought the temple site and a whole raft of other historical sites and manuscripts. Um, and I must say that I was very sad last night, very emotional. I wept, I cried, I reached out to people, tried to talk to them about it. Some of my friends in the reorganisation movement um, are very deeply upset by it. They feel as if their heritage has been sold out from underneath them. And of course, now the LDS Church can continue to rewrite the history of the Restoration because they own virtually everything. And uh, they tend to do that with everything they own. They tend to approach it from a very skewed angle and um, while I was on the internet last night there was already people you know well wonderful news the temple is coming home where it belongs and finally the miracle of miracles has happened and we get the temple we need to first understand what's happened The community of Christ was born out of the reorganised Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which, which, by the way, no longer really exists. It fractured in the 90s, and this new organisation was born, this liberal organisation, that since changing their name, they have distance themselves over the years from the history of the Restoration, from Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. But there was a mass exodus at the time of, of, of staunch believers in the Restoration, and they set up really what's loosely known as the, the reorganisation groups, independent branch groups, and there's lots, lots of them. Some are more affluent than others, some have buildings, others don't, some are bigger than others, some have more money than others. 
But uh, the reorganised Church of Jesus Christ of the Day Century doesn't exist. So the Community of Christ, when it, this transition happened, took with them all of the big assets. And um, they have been talking for some time about selling, um, divesting themselves of the Kirtland Temple and other assets that they, they owned um, because there was a deficit in their pension plan for their executives where do you go when you need plenty of money on the hip you go to the largest organisation within the restoration and of course that's the LDS church and they've got more money than they know what to do with but I want to make one thing perfectly clear what happened last night was no miracle it was a $195 miracle. That's what it was. It was a $195 payoff. $195 million payoff. And for that they got a raft of things, not just the temple. And with it, the history of the restoration as we know it will now pass to all the Aldeus Church which is where people like me and others like me are so upset and bereft right now because we know where this road takes us. It takes us down a road where um, other organisations are excluded from the story. The story really now belongs to them and they can rewrite their history to fashion it that way. But I really need to stress that the history of the Restoration is not is not about the LDS Church. The LDS Church was born out of the succession crisis that happened in 1844 when Joseph Smith died. And it was born out of the fact that Brigham Young controlled the Travelling Twelve. And it was born out of the fact that he wielded absolute control over that issue and of the polygamists and um, took with him followers to winter quarters and at winter quarters changed the rules and became prophet and president of this new organisation it, it is not it is not the original church I want you to understand that because it's important but now they have hold of the first temple ever built by in this last dispensation and will of course send out their myriads of young uh, shall we say uninformed men and women to um, change the narrative and it's very sad very sad um, yet again another part of our heritage is being brought up by the LDS Church and I think it's quite telling I think it's still in their um, temple ordinance video unless I'm mistaken I think there's a line in there where Satan says to Adam and Eve you can buy anything in this world with money it's all for sale and um, yet again that's proven to be the fact a hundred and ninety five million dollars and that's not even a dent not even a dent that's loose change how is anyone supposed to compete with that we can't compete with that lots of organizations can't compete with that I think for the restoration it's a very sad day because I mean, look, look, look I'm not going to be um, a total pain in the butt about this they will keep that place looking immaculate and it will be immaculately looked after there's no doubt about that they do it with everything that's not my gripe if it was just about keeping the thing looked after and maintained we could have done that anyway it was sold to pay for the pensions of executives in one church and it was bought by the another organisation to stake a further claim on the story of the restoration pure and simple 
Um, so for many people like us within the restoration family, and then, then of course that's an, another conversation we could have because there are many, many people who don't understand what that means. They don't understand what the restoration family means. They have no idea. To them, the restoration is the LDS church. It is the church. I'm sick of seeing and I'm reading these posts and these comments on Facebook. And everyone I'm reading, I'm just getting more and more and more and more angry. Oh, it's coming home. It's coming back to the church where it all belonged. It never belonged to you. Let me get that straight. It never belonged to the LDS church. Ever. It was a church built by the original Restoration family. And when the succession crisis happened, and it was a crisis, regardless of what you may think, each individual holding or branch or organisation took with them different things. Brigham couldn't get his hands on Kirtland. He couldn't get his hands on a lot of the Joseph Smith property because they held it in trust. Now, of course, they have it. Now, of course, they have many of the things that she would have walked over hot coals to avoid them having. They have them now. Um, such as the inspired version of the Bible manuscript. It's um, a one thing selling the temple. That manuscript, that manuscript was kept from them by Emma, deliberately placed in trust with her son in the reorganised church. They would never have it. But now all that's gone and uh, money talks, doesn't it? And uh, now they have what they've always desired. It's a very sad day. Anybody who doesn't think it's a sad day within the Restoration family is deluded. All this nonsense about um, maybe it's God's hand at work. It's, they don't understand what they're saying. Um, friends of mine who are deeply saddened by this, who believe their heritage has been sold from under them, quite rightly. You know, on the one hand, bemoan the fact that it's gone, and uh, grieve for the fact that it is gone. Also say, maybe God's hand was in this. Where? Where? Where was God's hand in this? It's now transferred its ownership to the, at the most... The most... Oh, how do I put this politically sensitively without annoying and upsetting people? It's gone to the most, one of the most corrupt organisations within the Restoration that you could possibly imagine. This is, this is not a church. It is a business. They own banks. They own homes. They own businesses, universities, colleges, schools parking lots, shopping malls. It is a financial organisation more than it is a church organisation. They have so much money and power. They can buy whatever they like. And they can bully anyone they like within that sphere. I've seen it personally. I know what LDS bullying feels like because I've been on the end of it. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And they wield that power with an iron fist against smaller branches like mine and others. They come to you with stupid requests. You can't use the word Mormon. You can't use the word book of. You can't use the word Jesus Christ in that context. Who on earth do they think they are? I'll tell you who they think they are. They think they are gods in embryo. Because they are all powerful. And now they have their hands on the first asset of the restoration, which was the Kirtland Temple. And the narrative will change over time. I know they have a five-year agreement to keep it as a historical building and to keep it free of charge. I can't see meetings taking place in there anymore. Because up until recently they were holding meetings in that building. They were holding 
Christmas pageants in that building, talks in that building, meetings, singing hymns in that building. That won't happen. Not unless you're a part of the LDS Church. And you're invited. You can look round fine, but that's it. Um, you've only got to see what they do at Carthage Jail to know that they control the narrative of the story. That's the troubling part for me. If you can continue buying up every asset there is, they will. They're the, the only ones with the history. They'll be the only ones with any real history, whether that be whether that be written or whether that be bricks and mortar, or whether that be oral. They'll be the only ones controlling the history of our history. Our history. They will control what is said, what is not said, and the stories that are said about that history. The tales that are told. The narratives that are told. This is an organisation, brothers and sisters, that continually, routinely tell the world Joseph Smith was a polygamist. But only a polygamist, probably more than likely a paedophile. Joseph Smith! Hiram, the early church. They are, the, they are the ones who have pushed this ridiculous stone in the hat theory for the translation of the Book of Mormon. They are the ones continually pushing the narrative about where the Book of Mormon takes place, how it was translated, who was involved, why it was like done the way it was. They control the narrative of the history of our culture. And now they'll control it even more. If you don't believe that, you're a fool. There's no miracle here. There's no hand of God here. This was a purely business decision. One organisation needed money. And another organisation said, how much do you want? I know there were other bids made on that temple to keep it within the family. We don't know how seriously they took those bids. I know John Hycheck at least put in an over £100 million bid. What happened to his bid? The fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how much money John Hycheck or people like him could have raised, the LDS Church would keep going, well, we'll add another £50 million to that. We'll add another £100 million to that. How far do you want to go? Because we've got a bucket. We've got a bottoms bucket to pick from. What? How big is your bucket? There was an, a great opportunity here. A missed opportunity here for both parties, the community of Christ and the LDS Church, to have changed this narrative. There was an opportunity here to heal the breach. Because, brothers and sisters, there is a massive breach. Huge. It's chasms wide. Um, people like our organisation are even excluded from people who want to heal the breach because of our, our added scripture. Regardless of the fact that we believe Joseph Smith is a prophet of God and the Book of Mormon is true and we have that as scripture and uh, we class ourselves as part of the restoration. There are still some things we aren't in, invited to take part in. They had an opportunity here. What they could have done is they could have said to the community of Christ, well, hang on a minute. We've got more money than we know what to do with. We can outbid anybody. So that's don't worry about the money. Whatever you ask for, we'll pay. They could have gone to the Strangites, the Bickertonites, the Hendrickites, the Cutlerites, the scattered independent uh, uh, reorganised branches. And there are lots of them. And other, other organisations said, look, look, we know you don't have the funds necessarily to buy this outright. Uh, but we want to put together a consortium. We want to keep this for everybody. Uh, 
So let's all do it together. It won't be owned by any one organisation. It'll be owned by us all as a family. That would have done lots to heal the breach. But we're not dealing with an organisation that wants to heal the breach because they don't even believe that the breach exists. They believe they are the one and only church on the face of the earth that is true. They believe that everybody else is a dog. That you don't have authority. That you have no place at this table. Only when we invite you. Or we want to get involved with something. I love them, their magnanimity. Oh, don't worry. Everybody will be invited to share in its beauty. But you own the damn thing. You own it. Lock, stock and barrel. If tomorrow morning you suddenly woke up and had a leader that said, No, this is ours. We don't want you involved. There's not a thing you could do about it. Nothing. That's the power they wield. They think they're being magnanimous by allowing you house room. They don't even think you belong in the house. They don't believe we belong anywhere. We're all apostates, you see. We're all criminals in the sight of God. And eventually, as somebody said on Facebook yesterday, which was a... Oh, what a wonderful thing to have said. The temple is coming home. The Lord is bringing back everything that belongs to us. And eventually, everybody will bow the knee to us. Because we are the only true church. Think about that. I will bow my knee to one person and one person only. And his name is Jesus Christ or Jesus the Christ, the Lord, the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's the only one I will kneel to. There isn't one person or organisation on this planet that I will kneel to in order to be saved. Do you understand? Now I'm not speaking for everybody involved within the Restoration family. I'm sure there are many people out there who think this is a wonderful thing that's happened. But there are lots and lots of people out there who are in mourning today. And we're not being given any, any sucker. Because we don't deserve any. It's a sad day for the restoration. And if you don't believe that, you are kidding yourself. When one organisation can control the narrative so completely, it is wrong, it is bad, and it is dangerous. Now, there are some people on the internet who I've listened to recently who really don't care less. They've left, the, they've left Mormonism. They think it's all a joke anyway. They think it's all a complete and utter laugh. But I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to those who believe. I'm talking to those who know Joseph Smith is a prophet of God. I'm talking to those who know he wasn't a polygamist. I'm talking to those who believe in the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ that was established as an organisation in the 1830s that built that temple to be a house of God. I don't know if in 10 years time they will refit the thing there's already talk by many members on the internet about doing their first endowment in there you'll be waiting a long time because that building wasn't built for that purpose they would have to totally gut that building and rebuild it from the inside and just leave the shell for that to happen I don't think they will do that I don't think they are that stupid. They might do 20 years from now, when this has become just another accepted fact.
but they weren't doing it. Um, but I do believe that they will move heaven and earth to get out of that that contract, that five, I think, I think it's five year contract, to keep this thing free of charge and open to everybody. Um, I'd be very surprised if they don't change that. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that really today, get that off my chest, because I was in tears last night. And um, I think it's a, a very dangerous thing that's happened. And a very unfortunate, unfortunate circumstance. But I think it was bound to happen with the community of Christ. I think the sale was bound to happen uh, by the community of Christ. And um, because of their more liberal stance towards... I mean, they've already thrown out Joseph Smith. They've already, they're already getting rid of the Book of Mormon. They're, they're now they're divesting themselves of all the history of the of, of, of the Restoration, and that will just become just another liberal left wing um, uh, church organization that has absolutely nothing to do with um, Joseph Smith or the Restoration. Um, and and I understand and know that the LDS Church have been cultivating this sale for a very very long time. Uh, longer than the period they've stated on their press release, anyway. I think they said twenty twenty two or something like that. Uh, but it's been longer than that. It's been in. De- it's been. This has been decades in the making. Um, uh, but uh, you know, in, instead of seeing it as an opportunity to open doors and heal wounds, um, yet again the almighty dollar has spoken, and uh, our history has been traded uh, like a piece of cattle. Uh, at a cattle market and um, and it's traded hands as quickly and easily as that uh, my other concern is what they're going to do with the inspired version that does worry me greatly um, as Emma never intended them to have it that really really rankles with me um, so as I said I'm very disappointed but there's nothing I can do about it and uh, we just have to take it we have to take our beatings. Uh, what did uh, Robert F. Kennedy say? We have to take our beatings as we go. Um, and I think that's what we're doing right now. We're taking our beatings as we go. And um, uh, if if the Lord has a plan in place, I'd like to see what that plan looks like because at the moment it looks like we're taking a beating. Not, not, not the restored branch alone, but... Uh, all those involved in the restoration who aren't LTS are taking a uh, kicking at the moment. So, um, it's very sad. Anyway, brothers and sisters, uh, although I'm ill, very tired, uh, and have this terrible cough, <coughs> uh, I wanted to get online today and, and, and do this video. So, um, thank you for being with me. Um, I hope... Maybe you found a silver lining in this. If you have, congratulations. Um, and um, I'll power to you. Um, I'm yet to see one. But um, as ever, my friends, look, look after one another. Look out for one another. Be kind to one another. Um, and um, we shall see how all this plays out in the coming years ahead. God bless you, brothers and sisters. And um, I'll see you again soon. God bless. Bye-bye.